Hey there, beautiful. Thank you for clicking my video. In today's video, I will be doing a wig show and tell slash color showcase on three wigs in the same style, but three different colors. And a lot of you love when I insert the word of God with a dash of motivation every once in the blue moon. So I thought this would be the perfect video to do it. So I'm gonna do my little intro and finish that up. Then let's get right into it. The wigs that I have in today's video is brought to you by Hair Supply Shop. In the description box, I will leave their direct store link, the link of the wig, and their Instagram. Also, let's give it up for the stock card model because she is slay, lay, 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 slaying, okay? The wig that I have is Otre 13 by 6 HD Transparent Lace Frontal Wig in the style Maximina in the colors DRS2 slash Chocolate Caramel, DRFF Red Velvet, and DRFF2 slash Ginger Brown. All right, you guys. So here is a close-up of what inside of the wig looks like. And I am surprised. Otre was not playing. They came through with the 360 lays. Like, what? What? Oh my God. So you get a 13 by 6 lace parting. Behind the lace parting, you get two combs. One right there, one over there. You also get another comb in the nape area with adjustable straps. They inserted a elastic band so you could get an extra secure snug fit. That's what it looked like. And it stretches. As for the cap material, it is made on a stretch fit breathable material. So that's really good for your hair to breathe underneath. And the texture, I would say, yes, the hair texture is on the silky side. Let me show you what the wig looks like on the mannequin head. Here is a close-up of how the hairline comes straight out of the box. It comes a little bit pre-plucked and you also get baby hairs, but keep in mind this is a synthetic wig so the knots do not come bleached like a virgin hair wig can. First, I'm gonna show you guys how I style these wigs on the mannequin head. So first up is the ginger brown color and I wanna do like a half up, half down slash side swoop on the side. I'm going in with my Andis hot comb on a temperature number five, and I'm just gonna press the roots of the hair so the parting space could be a little bit more flatter, and I'm also gonna press out the hairline just to make it a little bit more smooth. So the next part, you do not have to do, this is optional, but I would like to go in and pluck the hairline just a little bit more to my liking so it could look just a little bit more realistic. Like I said, you don't have to do this part. I just wanna show you guys what I do so you guys know how I got my end results. When I do half up, half down styles on my mannequin head, the back tends to lift up. So right there where the tracks is, I just like to put like two T-pins right there so it can stay down. Then after that, I'm gonna take my hair and just swoop everything up into that ponytail. But I'm also trying to be cautious of the tracks on the side because the frontal area isn't that big on the sides. So I'm still taking most of the hair from the frontal, but I'm also putting some hair back down so it can cover the tracks.
Now I'm gonna take a piece of hair underneath the ponytail from the weft area and just wrap it around the skunji so it can cover that up. I like to use eyebrow scissors to cut off the extra lace in the front. So I just take my scissors and cut right along the hairline and I'm just being careful, trying not to cut into the hairline because it'll mess up the shape of the hairline. Now let's move on to the next color. So I already told you guys, the hairline on these wigs comes lightly pre-plucked with baby hairs but I just need it plucked a little bit more. So I have a new plucking method on how I pluck my synthetic wig. So if you guys would like that updated method, feel free to let me know. So I'm just showing you guys the difference. The right side is what I did. The left side is how the wig comes. And as you can see, it's a big difference. Now I'm going to go in with this Maybelline Fit Me Powder in the shade 360. I dab some of that powder on the brush and I apply the makeup powder underneath the lace only to the spots that I'll be showing. So that's the parting space and the hairline. I'm doing a middle part, so I'm just mostly focusing on the forehead of the middle part. With this last color, I would like to do a right side part. This is how the wig hairline comes plucked. Off camera, I went in and plucked this some more to my liking and I love it. If anybody doesn't really know what dry shampoo is, dry shampoo is just something that I use to dim down the shine on my wigs. This dry shampoo isn't as harsh as other ones, so it doesn't leave a strong white residue, but it does help with the wig just a little bit. I don't want too much baby hairs in the middle of my forehead, so I'm just plucking out some of those baby hairs. All right, here I am. And are you guys ready for this sleigh? Are you ready for this sleigh? Please thumbs up this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts in the end. I'm going to insert a word that I heard from Sarah Jake Roberts, and it touched me so dearly to the point I just need her message to get out there. This word is for my ladies that feel like no one understand them. A lot of you are curious on what my braid pattern underneath the wigs look like this is it whenever i get the chance i'll work on a tutorial for that if you have any question questions while the video is playing or if you want to give a sister some props feel free to comment them below in the comment section and i will get back to them as soon as i can talk to you later queens and kings but this year feels a little different this year, I am burdened with the reality that in order for me to become the type of person who achieves those goals, 
I myself am going to have to become a different person. Is that anyone's testimony? You have a goal, but that goal is not attainable for this version of who you are. This version of you may not have the discipline. This version of you may not have the communication skills. This version of you may not feel knowledgeable enough for what is ahead of you. You're stepping into a relationship and you're wondering, I don't know if I have what it takes to be vulnerable. I'm going to have to become a different person to raise this child. I'm going to have to become a different person to lose this weight. I'm going to have to become a different person to lift on this level, to speak on this level, to be in charge of my, of my business and my organization and my team on this level. There are some things that we have to do in life that we ourselves cannot do and stay the same. We're going to have to become a different person to get it done. If you're like me, you have these moments where you feel the frustration internally when you realize that you need to become a different person, but you just don't know how. The frustration of knowing you need to be different, but not really knowing where do I start or how do I begin, what are the decisions that I need to make in order to activate this change. When we're in those circumstances where we focus on the fact that we need to become a different person, what we end up doing is we miss out on us actually creating vision for who we need to become. That means that we focus so intently on I need to be different and beat ourselves up. I need to be different. Something's got to change. Something's got to shift down on the inside of me. But what is that shift? What is it specifically that you want to change? I want to speak up instead of silencing my voice. I want to learn to become more vulnerable. We use these blanket statements to help us understand that I need to change, but we have to become specific about exactly what needs to transform in our life if we're going to experience the metamorphosis that comes with becoming a different person. When's the last time you got specific about what needs to change? When you stop saying, I just want my life to be different, what in your life do you want to be different? What in your relationships do you want to be different? Because how can we wage war on an adversary that we have not assessed? How can we wage war on a demon that we won't look at? How do we wage war on an addiction that we will not confront? It is not enough to say that I want to be a different person if you are not willing to be specific about what it is you want to change. Therapy is powerful, but it is even more powerful when you come in there and you say, this is what I want to change. I've got a negative way of thinking. I'm insecure about what happened in my past. I feel like I'm an imposter in this role. When you give that therapist something to work with, they get eager. They get activated themselves because they recognize now I'm dealing with someone who's got a pinpointed area of acute pain that they want to see transformed. That's not always everyone's testimony, though, when it comes down to becoming a different person. It's not always you have this internal frustration that's making you want to change your life and change your identity. There are also moments when God exposes you to a version of yourself that you never thought that you could be. When God exposes you to an opportunity, to a calling, to a ministry that is so beyond who you are, and you think to yourselves, God, I'm just satisfied with where I am. I'm finally happy with what's happening in my life, and now you're exposing me to something that is so beyond me, and I know that in order for me to lay hold of it, I'm going to have to become a different person. God, how could you put me in ministry? I'm going to have to become a different person to do that. God, how could you set me up to move to that city, I'm going to have to become a different person for this role. There are moments when our life is completely fine and complacent, and yet God exposes us to how he sees us. I feel my help coming. You see, what happens when God sends us a word, and sometimes that word comes through an experience. Sometimes that word comes through an opportunity. That word is meant to be a mirror that is exposing you, not to how you see yourself, but to how God sees you. And when God sees you a certain way, he won't just allow you you to stay comfortable when you could step into the change agent that he needs in the earth. And so God will expose you until you become hungry to become a different person. But through collaboration, we can overcome. Those things 
old things versus new things, my old way of thinking versus my new way of thinking, my old way of speaking versus my new way of speaking. All of those things I lay out before the presence of God and I say, God, here are my old things and you carry my new things and I need collaboration so that I can lay the old things down and lay hold of the new things. I want to talk to you a little bit practically about how we become a new person. The only change that is long lasting is the change that happens within us. Sure, there are external benefits. Maybe you're trying to change your weight, but there has to be an internal decision about who I'm gonna become and what I'm gonna change, what discipline am I gonna implore so that I can achieve this external, this physical goal or destination. When we think about this practical way of becoming a new person, I think it's important for us to recognize that a new thing can't happen in your spirit without there being reconciliation. Not with your fears, but with God. Reconciliation, reconciliation. When I looked this word up in the Greek, it literally meant to be different, to be different. That means that to be reconciled with God means that I am going to come together with God so that I can become different with God. Whatever we reconcile with, we take on the identity of that thing. When I reconciled within myself that I could only live from a place of fear, that I could only live from a place of shrinking, that I couldn't have some levels of confidence, that I would always have low self-esteem, that was reconciliation. To make a definition about who you are, to make a declaration about your identity, a declaration about your potential, a declaration about your promise and your destiny is to make a reconciliation and to live within that reconciliation because you believe that no more is possible for you. But to be reconciled with God is to take the limits off of who you are. To be reconciled with God is to never, to never be without creativity. To be reconciled with God means to never be without prophecy. To be reconciled with God is to never have to wonder what you're going to speak about when you walk into a room. To be reconciled with God means that I am no longer insecure. To be reconciled with God means that I cannot have anxiety. To be reconciled with God means wherever God's presence is, God is going to consume whatever is in God's presence. That's why you can go from being reconciled reconciled with stress and reconciled with overwhelmed and into a worship service where all of a sudden things lift up off of you because I'm now reconciled with God and God is an all-consuming presence. He is an all-consuming fire and when I reconcile myself with the presence of God, there are some things that cannot be reconciled with the presence of God. That means that my shame can be reconciled with the presence of God. God says I can't use that in this reconciliation. My fear can be reconciled reconciled with God. I can't use that in my reconciliation. My anxiety can't be reconciled with God. So even if it's just three minutes of worship, that's three minutes that that pain has to get off of me. That's three minutes that that anxiety has to get off of me. And I don't know who you are, but you've been struggling with your mental health. And you've been wondering, God, am I always going to have ebbs and flows? And I hear God saying that it may take some time, but don't give up on the reconciliation. Because when God gets finished, depression can't be reconciled reconciled with God. When God gets finished, anxiety can't be reconciled with God. And yes, God may use a therapist. And yes, God may use medication. But when it's all said and done, you're going to be reconciled with God because God is a by any means necessary God. That means when you come up short, I'll send Jesus to pull you back up where you belong because I'm that serious about you being reconciled with me. Do you know who your God is? Your God says you started with me and I don't lose my children along the way that means I'll do whatever is necessary to wrap my arms around you I'll send a stranger I'll send a YouTube video I'll send a video on social media because I'm running after you I'm chasing you down you gotta be reconciled who are you I hear God saying come back who are you I hear God saying I still have plans for you who are you I hear God saying you can still become different who are you who are you who are you I hear God saying you can still break the generational curse I hear God saying that you can still create the breakthrough if you're willing to be reconciled with me. Somebody needs to break up the reconciliation they've made with their past. 
Break up the reconciliation you've made with low self-esteem. Break up the reconciliation you've made with addiction. You're not always going to be addicted. You're not always going to be depressed. You're not always going to wonder whether or not you have what it takes. I break that reconciliation in the name of Jesus. And I call you back to who you are in God. You are the righteousness of God. And through Christ Jesus, every chain that's holding you down, it must be broken. Every chain that's got wrapped around your mind, it must be destroyed in the name of Jesus. The name that is above all names. I'm calling you to become a different person. I'm calling you to step out of your fear. I'm calling you to step out of your anxiety. You've been you long enough. It's time to be who God has called you to be. You've been who they needed you to be long enough. It's time for you to be who God has called you to be. I hear God saying, step into your own. Step into the land I gave you. Step into the territory I have reserved with your name on it. I hear God saying, it's got to be you. 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 No one else is going to do it. Stop looking around. No one else is going to write it. Stop asking them to do it. It's got to be you. And no, you cannot do it on your own. But remember, God is not betting on you. God's betting on his power to work through you. Through, oh God. Where's the momentum going to come from? Where's the power going to come from? Where's the confidence going to come from? God, I'm down to my last. When is the last time you were intentional about a fresh reconciliation with God? Maybe how you reconciled with God three months ago, a year ago, six months ago, ten years ago. That reconciliation is outdated. Anyone who runs a business and does accounting understands that ten years ago that reconciliation has nothing to do with my present circumstance. You need a fresh reconciliation for a fresh season. I hear God saying that you're not finished being made new. And because you're not finished being made new, do you need a fresh reconciliation for where you are now? I love you, Sarah Jake Roberts. Excuse me, Pastor Sarah Jake Roberts. If you are interested in the sermon that I inserted in today's video, I'll link it below in the description box. Remember, God is good, good is God. There is so many harsh things going on in this world right now, and we honestly need to promote more goodness. So if you ever need to talk, I'm here. But let me get on to my final thoughts on these wigs. When I was styling all three wigs on the mannequin head, I noticed when I was styling the wig, it had a few tangles here and there, but I know most of it was caused by me going in and plucking the hairlines a bit. After I styled the wig on myself, the shedding hair did go down, so to me, shedding is low. My hair circumference is 22 inches. The wig fits snug on my head, but it does still have some stretch cap room left on the inside, so I do consider these wigs to be big head friendly. And if you have a smaller head than me, I recommend knotting the end of the elastic band that they inserted and hooking the adjustable straps very close or crisscrossing the adjustable straps. These wigs are beginner friendly. If you want to get into the frontal look without breaking the bank, I don't recommend these wigs for every single day wear or sleeping in the wig because it will make the wig tangle very quickly so it won't be long lasting. But if you need something that you can sleep in and wear every day, I believe you can get a good week wear with it, but only with the proper care. So probably just one week, like I said. These is one of those wigs you take out of the box because you wanna pop out with your hair really nicely done. But let me know in the comment section if you would try these wigs what color was your favorite i hope you enjoyed this video please hit the thumbs up and subscribe button if you would like to see more videos like this but until next time i love you and enjoy the rest of your day later you guys